and welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, what do you want to talk about today? Well, I thought we should look at the system settings, uh, maybe when to check some of the options, when to leave some unchecked. Okay, that's a great idea because mm. as you know, there are a lot of options and they affect both how an estimate order is calculated as mm. well as how things work in enterprise. Right. The manual breaks those up into uh, four groups, the estimating order entry options into mm -hmm. four groups. Um, so let's kind of follow that pattern and we'll do group one today. As you know, there are a lot of options, so it'll make it a sure. bit easier. We can, we'll do a, additional videos to cover the other options. Okay, that sounds good. So let's take a look. Okay. So I'm going to go into file maintenance. I'm going to go up to file and choose system settings. And these are the estimating order entry options. And we'll start at the top here. This first one is saved to history from invoicing AR only. And what this option will do is if you have it checked off, mm. you cannot move a job um, into history status except from invoicing or AR when you post an invoice. And that's important if you own invoicing or AR so that jobs don't get moved to history mm -hmm. uh, before they've been invoiced. Correct. Okay? Okay. The second one here is very similar, complete jobs from shipping only. And with this checked off, Again, it's similar. It will only let you move a job to completed status from the shipping module. And that's important if you're using shipping so that the user doesn't forget to enter shipping information. Right. They'll have to go into the shipping module, enter their shipping information, and hit the complete job. And if there's no shipping for a particular job, that's fine. Just the mm -hmm. complete. They'll have to hit the complete button to move the job to the completed status. Okay. Okay. This next one, always allow jobs to be moved to history manually. This works in conjunction with this first one in that um, you can still have this first one checked and jobs can be moved to history by invoicing it or AR, but it also allows you to um, be able to move a job to history in invoice, I mean, in estimating order entry if you need to. Okay. Okay. When might some cases be that we'd want to have that checked off? Well, we have some users that maybe have, um, do only invoicing module or the mm -hmm. AR module only and a lot of their jobs they do want to create invoices for mm -hmm. but maybe they have an online ordering system that brings in a lot of jobs that have already been paid and they don't really need to track the invoice in enterprise. Right. Gives them the option to go in estimating order entry and just move it to mm -hmm. history. Okay. Make it quicker. Sounds okay. good. This next option, multiply make ready spoilage by number of inks. With that option checked, when you set up a make ready process in enterprise and you give it a certain number of sheets for mm -hmm. the make ready spoilage, the system will then takes that make ready spoilage, it multiplies it by the number of lots, and then with this option checked, it also multiplies it by the number of inks. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this particular option, when it's checked, um, there it, it works with this an option multiply make ready spoilage by number of passes. You'll notice if I check this option, this one becomes unchecked. If I check that one this one becomes unchecked. So you can only have one of these checked. Now the multiply make ready spoilage by number of passes, if you ch choose that option, mm -hmm. instead of multiplying it by inks, it multiplies it by how many passes it has to go through the press. So okay. it's one or the other. Sure, so it's just okay. a toggle. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna set mine back to by number of inks. This next one, exclude web from multiplying make ready spoilage by number of inks. If you want to, for, um, all of your types of presses, except for web, multiplied by the number of inks. But then web, you don't. You just want it to be the spoilage times the lots or signatures. Mm -hmm. And you can use that exclude okay. button just for the web presses. Right. Okay. All right, we covered this one. The next one, do not multiply make ready spoilage by extra passes. You um, have an option or a field when you pull a press process in. that You can say uh, a number of extra passes that you want to... Um, send a job through the press. And mm -hmm. if you uh, do not want to multiply the make ready by the extra passes, you would check that option off. Okay. okay. This next one, use run spoilage table from the first press only. This you would use in the case where you might have more than one press in a job. You might have the first press that does the printing and maybe you bring in a second press to do a varnish. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you don't want to include the spoilage on the second press in right. that case. So with that option checked, it only applies the spoilage to the first press process. Okay. okay, makes sense. This next one, include the make ready spoilage and impression count. Most people do check that off. And what that will do is when the system calculates how many impressions that you have on a particular press run process, mm -hmm. it includes the impressions for the make ready as well. Okay. okay. This next one, verify chargeback code on orders. This would be for 
uh, implant types of um, companies that use chargeback codes and it will just ask you to verify that the chargeback code is valid and if it's not valid, if it's not a chargeback code in the system, it will give you an error and won't save the order. So that one would be used if you are an implant, as I said, and you're using all chargeback codes and you want to force the user to put in a chargeback code that you have set up in your database and not just mm -hmm. let them put one in on the fly. Right. Okay. okay. And this last one that we're going to cover today is don't open estimate or order if already in use. That's a good one to check off. And what that would do is if you have an estimate or you have an order opened and maybe your coworker goes to open the same estimate or the same order and wants to make some changes, mm -hmm. they'll get an error message and that said it's that says it's already in use and it will not allow them to open it. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. Now, what if it's not checked though, and two people are able to get into the estimate at the same time? Yep, that could happen. If you don't check it, the first person will be able to open it. The second person will get a warning, mm -hmm. but they can okay through the warning and still open it. Okay. But what could happen is if both people are making changes, the mm -hmm. last person that saves it is going to get their get the changes. changes right. It does give them a warning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but it's good to check off. Yeah, I would think that makes sense. So. All right, well, that's a good place to stop for the first mm -hmm. group of estimating order entry options. Do you have any questions? No, I think that was explained very well. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne LaFlam. And I'm Chris Costa. And please look forward to more to come. Thank <laughs> you.